All right, let's sketch some graphs of um, some ellipses and hyperbola. And um, this is this is precalculus uh, topic nine. So here's our first equation we're going to take a peek at this uh, this one right here. And I notice that um, these things are added together. So that tells me this is going to be an ellipse, uh, x squared, y squared. And so let me start with uh, what I do know. I know that um, the center is at negative 4, positive 2. And I'm just thinking about what plug-in make this a 0, plug-in make this a 0. So my center is at the point um, negative 4, positive 2. Great. And then now from there, I can look at my, my offset. My offset in the x direction is 5 because this is 5 squared and this is 4 squared. My offset in the y direction under the y is, is 4. So um, I'm going 5 in this direction, in the x direction. And so if I think about that, this is a change in x. So the height doesn't change. The height is still at 2. But I was at negative 4, and if I go over 5, that puts me at 1, add 5. If I go back 5, subtract 5, that puts me at negative 9. And then uh, my height change is 4, so that would get me maybe up to here and here. I'm not really trying to draw it to scale. Um, my x is the same in both of these. It doesn't move left or right at all, but it moves up and down. So up, to, up 4 from 2 would be add 4 to it, so that's a 6. Down would be subtract 4 from it, negative 2. So I could draw in my, my rectangle right now if I wanted to help me uh, draw it, but I have an ellipse that closes up like this. So there's my basic ellipse with its vertices. Now I want to find the foci and, and calculate the um, eccentricity of it. So my foci, I know that c squared is a squared compared to b squared, and it's the opposite of this, so it'll be minus. And my a, it's, it's arbitrary, it's just the larger one. So a squared is 25, b squared is 16, 25 minus 16 is 9, so that means c is 3. So my foci will be 3 away from the center, and the foci are always in the, in the, along the major axis, along the way, the lar way that's larger. So um, height didn't change at all x changed by 3. So if I add 3 to negative 4, that's a negative 1. Heights didn't change at all. Back 3 from here is negative 7. So there's a sketch of that. So now let me look over at this, this one and give it a sketch. Um, I notice this is subtracting, so this is going to be um, a hyperbola. And then my center is at positive 3, negative 2. So my center is at 3, negative 2. All right, next thing I notice is uh, this is 3 squared, and this is 5 squared. So 3 squared and 5 squared. So my offset in the x direction is 3. So I'm going to go 3 in both ways this, and 5 in the y direction. And I do, I'm going to draw my rectangle in here because that's going to give me my, my asymptotes. All right, let me label these. Um, if I go 3 in the x direction, add 3 to 3, that puts me at 6, same height. Take back 3, that puts me at 0, same height. Change of 5 in this direction, so same width, but up 5 from there. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. And I know my asymptotes are going to go corner to corner on that rectangle that... that these extreme points make. Maybe I could clean that up a little bit. There we go. Now, what direction does it go? Does it go up and down or does it go left, right? And the way I can tell is, notice that x squared is minus the y squared. This is what I call my positive term. They're actually both positive, but this is the one that I'm adding. This is what I'm subtracting. So I'm going in the x direction. So this will look like this and this. Now let me get my, uh, my foci, where those are at. So I know that c squared is a squared compared to b squared, but it's opposite operator, so plus. So this will be uh, 9 plus 25. And let's see, 9 plus 25, that's 34. 
Great. So c squared is 34. So that means that c is the square root of 34, which, uh, let's see, um, I think 4 goes into that, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. No, we'll just leave it as square root of 34. So um, my, my foci are going to be, they're always in the direction that the vertices are um, on the hyperbola. So this is kind of nice. Um, my height didn't change, and my width changed. I was at 3, and I just added square root of 34 to that. And this one I can write as 3 minus square root of 34, stand at the height of negative 2. Now let's do the eccentricity for both of these. Um, eccentricity for this one, we usually call it C over A. Um, it's really C over the, the larger of the two, so 5. So the eccentricity here is 3 fifths. Um, and it's the larger of the two because that's the, diff, the direction that the, that the foci are in. Same thing with this one, it's in the sense that it's the direction that the foci are. So my eccentricity is still C over A, um, although, again, we call it A, but it's really the direction that the foci are in. In this case, it's one that's under X. So uh, my C value here was square root of 34, and my A value, my, my value that goes this direction, is 3. So there's my eccentricity for that. Uh, I just want to point out, like, if this had been y plus 2 squared over 25 minus x minus 3 squared uh, over 9 equals 1, everything would be the same except my hyperbola would go this direction. My foci would be out here, and my eccentricity would change because now I'm going in that direction. It would be root 34 over 5. All right. So there's a quick example of just sketching graphs of these.